Welcome to another episode of the BWP Minute Series. I'm here with AC, Dr. AC Ansan of uh, Access and uh, also a lecturer at uh, Chelsea University. Mm-hmm. That's right. uh, well, moving towards uh, our final event on the 25th, Dr. AC is going to be a resource helping you figure out what to do next and how to make yourself marketable to businesses out there. Yep. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I'd like you to just touch a little bit about yourself and your past. Okay. Um, I do two main things. and um, One is recruitment and corporate training here at Axis. And then on the other hand, I teach at Ashesi University. So I teach leadership, negotiation, a number of classes. My training is, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm an academic. I combine those two. And... Um, I enjoy working with young people, so I do a lot of career coaching as well. So, let's start first from the challenges. What are some of the issues that you come across with a lot of the Ghanaian youth coming out of school and preparing themselves for the job market? All right, so that's a very broad question, but generally, I'd say work. We're quick to, well, oftentimes many people are quick to, you know, blame the system and the system doesn't prepare them enough, etc. But I think if I'm looking at challenges that they face, let me break them into two, what they can control and what they can't. One thing they can't control is the economy and what's going on out there. And so there are times when you have people trained in one area and there aren't jobs in that area. Now, the challenges they could have control over is learning about new markets, breaking into new markets. You have people who are trained, um, I think we operate at the two extremes when it comes to things they can control. One, you may have people who are trained in areas where um, the jobs aren't sitting around, but when they come, they haven't been equipped to apply the knowledge in order to, you know, create their own jobs or to work for somebody. You can easily market your skills to somebody who may not even have thought of it, but the moment you say it, they say, ha, huh, okay, maybe I can use this person's services. And then there's the other extreme where they are overcoached, they are over-exuberant, they've gone for all the um, self-help you know, programs possible, and they are no longer real. So sometimes in an interview, you're talking to somebody, and they sound so scripted. Um, I hereby submit so and so and so, and it's legalese, it's, it's not real. And so that's something they can control, but something they often don't. And so they come, they have the book knowledge, they may have even some experience, but they're just not real. We're looking to hire people who are real, people who are not looking just for a job, because when you're looking for a job, anything goes, but people who are looking to build a career. So many of them are going through school, coming out, and they're looking for jobs, as opposed to looking to build careers. So you have people looking in all sorts of directions when really there isn't the sitting down, thinking, planning, and then deciding. I may decide my real career is something that I may embark upon in five years, but between now and then, I'll do something else that is purposeful. So it's a job, but it's still purposeful. Oftentimes it's, Charlie, I'm there, I'm not doing anything, I need something to do, and just get me a job. I don't know if I've answered your question. No, 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 absolutely. <laughs> At a minimum, what are some of the skill sets that you would expect anybody who's getting ready for the job market to have? Okay, communication number one. You can have all the head knowledge, but if you can't articulate it to somebody, that's a big problem. Um, we find that with particular functions. Um, the more technical the role, very often, the less articulate you may find people. And so communication skills, attitude, attitude is everything. If I'm hiring you, I need to be confident that I can have you handle clients and you're not going to be rude to them. I should be comfortable enough to know that you're proactive, you have a a positive attitude. When you face a challenge, you don't just stop, but you keep looking for ways. You know, so there are times when you may have somebody who's working in an administrative role and they're supposed to follow up on something. They call once, the person didn't pick up. That's it. They just sit. The right attitude is somebody who says, no, I'm going to force until I get through to this person. So I call, I call, I send a text, I send an email, I look them up, I even go to the office if need be. 
So that, that proactive, um, very open and ready to work you know, attitude, communication attitude, those are two key things. And of course, technical competence. I mean, if I'm hiring you as an accountant, you can't come in without the basic skills. Um, and that's, that's important. So whatever area you want to operate in, you don't need to have a degree in that area, but at least some competence to start with, you have to have. Those, those might be the three things I'd highlight. Interesting. What are typically some of the job areas that you get requests for from your clients, your company clients? Uh, it cuts across. We hire across industries. So we have media houses, we have financial institutions, oil and gas, investment houses, private equity. So we, we hire across um, industries and then across functions, marketing, HR, finance, IT, et cetera, et cetera. So it's hard to, to, to bundle them. I could talk about trends, you know, where um, people are becoming a little more open-minded when it comes to hiring people who may not come in with that particular degree because sometimes we advise employers and say, look, you might need somebody in sales and marketing, but you don't need somebody who has a degree in sales and marketing. If they show you they have what it takes, right attitude, communication skills, and they can understand what the main aim of their role is, you're set. So slowly employers are getting to that point. And um, then also, when I started Axis in 2008, which is about six years ago, um, a lot of the roles that we had and the kind of requests that were coming in from employers, um, general management, you know, basic um, entry level, junior level roles, etc. Now you have people who are looking for more technical roles. So we're getting more requests in the areas of engineering. Um, when it comes to IT, you know, programmers, etc. It's always there's always been a market for that. And so we're getting roles that are a little more business development managers, for example. When I started, it wasn't common. But now people are realizing it's not just the hardcore sales and marketing I need. I need a BDM who can think finance, can think marketing, can think business modeling, forecasting, you know, a very robust kind of person. That's what we're looking for. That's what a lot of clients are now looking for. So somebody who can function across um, areas, you know, not just stuck in one silo. Do you do any type of uh, coaching or training within Access? We do. We do um, corporate training. When it comes to working with job seekers, for example, we do a lot of career coaching and sometimes somebody may come and say, I have an interview and um, I need a little help in preparing. One of the things we make sure we do not do is overcoach people. Then they sound like robots. And so really just giving people the opportunity to present who they are and then giving them feedback. Um, I do a lot of career coaching. So in-house, we have um, career coaching where somebody may come in and say, mm, I'm not too sure what I want to do, or I've hit this obstacle and that obstacle. I'm not sure what to do next. And then we sit down. We may let them do some assessments and have a full conversation and help them to map out you know, a career plan and what they want to do, what next, what are my options, etc. So um, for those who are coming on, not this Saturday, but um, mm -hmm. the next next week Saturday, mm -hmm. uh, on the twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. What are they to expect? What kind of questions can they ask you? What can they get answers to? Um, if it has to do with career self discovery, I'd like to call it. You're not too sure what to do, etc. If it has to do with job hunting, I'm not sure where to look, or I've been looking and I'm frustrated. It's been six months and I'm still, you know, sitting at home. If it's got to do with I want to start something on my own. I'm not sure where to begin. Um, those kinds of questions we can handle. You know, so anything that has to do with career, finding a job, or you may have people who are already in work situations, but they're facing challenges. Things that have to do with career progression, things that have to do with office politics. And some people may have very specific questions. This is what's going on. What am I to do? Um, we can help. We can help people with that. Well, great. Well, you heard it, folks. Uh, I was here with Dr. Issy Ansan, and she's going to be with us at the BWP series on the last Saturday of the month. That's the 25th of October. We hope to see you all there. Have an awesome time and stay empowered. All right. Thank you.